This is a 2020 Toyota Prius XLE all-wheel drive E. Today we are with our friends at Heinz Toyota of Mankato. Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, Two Guys, Guys in a ride. ride. And today, Nathan, what are we taking a look at? We are taking a look at a 2020 Toyota Prius XLE all-wheel drive E. E, that's right. So, but before we do, if you want to keep up to date with all the new cars, trucks, and SUVs, and you like cool collector cars, and you want to know about all the new technology that's built into these vehicles, take a minute to hit that subscribe button down below and hit that bell notification up above so you never miss a video. That's right. So what do you say, Nathan? Let's, Let's go, go for, for a ride. ride. All right, so the, welcome to the detail review of the infotainment system and the, the driver's information system and the way you control those. So um, let's start with the driver's information. So basically you've got three screens. This one stays the same. If this one doesn't change. It shows you your fuel, uh, whoops, <laughs> shows you uh, what mode you're in as far as the drive mode goes. Okay, you can click through those and then whatever you're in shows up unless you're in normal. Then you also see it displaying on the middle screen. Okay, you got your speed, your outside temperature, and then the miles that you've driven, your odometer. Okay, the middle screen is the one that you can change things on. The third digital screen is your gear selector indicator, and then your, of course your clock, and then over here you have dummy lights. And this is where things like, when you turn your heated steering wheel on, there is no light, but you can notice that it shows up there. If I turn my cruise control on, that shows up there. Okay, so all those things uh, will show up there. All right, so let's talk about this middle screen that you can adjust. There are four arrows with a middle button to push and then a back button right here. So that's what I'm gonna use. Basically going left and right will allow you to select different screens. So starting here, I've got information. I have got the clock. I have got uh, climate control settings. I have got my uh, some of my safety systems, safety systems, in particular the adaptive cruise control. Over here, I've got messages. If the car gives me a message, something oil needs to be changed or uh, low pressure, does us have a tire pressure monitoring system? And then I basically have some settings that I can do. So that's how you get through the main menus. Okay, so the up down arrows will allow you to scroll through the various screens that are available for each mode. So I am on the information mode. So I go down and here I've got uh, some different settings. So I've got um, Eco Start, Eco Cruise, Eco Stop, okay? I have got fuel consumption record. I've got uh, my average, see, driving ratio, average speed, elapsed time. Okay, I've also got eco savings, okay, trip A, trip B, fuel cost. Um, and that's kind of an interesting one uh, to, to watch. Um, here you have actually have an eco diary to tell you how you're driving on each individual day. And then you have your all -wheel, a graphic display of your all-wheel drive system to see which tires are being activated. All right, let's go to the right and we'll go to the clock. So basically here you have two options. You can uh, set the clock by pushing the middle button between the arrows and then you can adjust the time if you want. Okay, then I hit the back button and then you've got a timer that you can set. All right, let's go over climate control. So the two settings here are, you can either have it as a driver priority, so it makes sure to heat or cool your particular area, or you can have it go to everybody. And I did that just by pressing a left, right arrow, all right? All right, so we'll be nice to rob and leave it there. Hey, okay, hit the back button again. Now I go over to some of my um, uh, cruise control settings, and here is where the gap setter is. 
okay? And then I can't actually set the gap unless the cruise is, let's see if I turn it on. Let's see if I can set that now. Okay, I actually have to be moving for that to set, but this is where you could, and it's on the steering wheel, it's it's the, the button on the bottom right. So if you uh, press that, you'll increase or decrease your gaps. Okay, and then moving on again, messages. I don't have any, but this is where they would appear if you had, um, you need to change oil or, or uh, low fuel or anything like that. All right, now you do have a bunch of features here you can turn on or off. For instance, parking assist. You can turn that on or off here, and that's simply by clicking the button in the middle of the arrows that turns it on or off. You have pre-collision sensitivity, okay? So I can change that just by hitting that button in the middle of the arrows, okay? Over here, I can turn the whole system on or off. Up here, I can change the lane departure assist sensitivity settings. So I can change it to high, standard, or high again, okay? And then over here, I've got lane departure assist steering, the assist mode. And then I've got some vehicle settings here for maintenance system, okay? And I'll go back a minute. And then I can do some customizations on the screen. I can do a simple or a split screen, a screen off, an HV system indicator. And if you look, I got language. I can do the pop-up display on or off. I can do language. I can do calendar, um, eco savings, history, reset, initialization of your system, all of those things. So a lot of places you can customize in here. Okay, so moving on to the infotainment screen, one of the things that I like is that it's integrated into the dashboard. It doesn't look like a standalone anymore, and I really like that. Now, in addition to having a touch screen, you have all sorts of physical buttons here if you would rather do the physical buttons, okay? Uh, basically, you've got a home button, okay? And that's what you're seeing right here. So you've got three, di three different screens. You've got your media, you've got your phone, and then you've got uh, your engine and your battery and how, you know, where the power's coming from. And that will display as you're driving, okay? You've got a menu button. That allows you to go to the different uh, things in, in the infotainment screen. Um, audio, phone, apps, projection, info, and setup. And, you know, projection just allows you, if you don't have Android, Apple, or if you don't have, if you don't have Apple CarPlay or Amazon Alexa, you can use the projection to, uh, to get your phone to display up here. Okay, when I go into the apps up here, this is run through the Entune app. So you do have to have the Entune app on your phone and you have to be uh, signed into it. Um, so then, then you have these different apps that will show up. If you don't have, if you're not running the Entune app, these won't show up, okay? And then if I go uh, back again, to menu, okay? Um, let's take a look at info, okay? So if you go into Eco, now you can see that screen I showed you a minute ago. Um, you can see uh, where your battery percentage is. You can see what the different electric motors are doing. I love it how for that all-wheel drive system, they show that separate electric motor. That, that's really cool. And then you have your engine. You've got history. You've got trip information that you can go into. You do have a touchscreen back button right here. And then if I go into a vehicle alert history, if you had an alert for, for something, it would show up there. Okay, well, let's go back here to menu and let's go into setup. In setup, you have a few more things here. So basically, this is the category that you're gonna look at and whatever is available for these categories will show up in this screen. So, um, like you wanna turn Apple CarPlay on, there you go. You can even set a theme. So if I change it to say this, you can see the colors change right away. All right, um, so if I keep going down here using my scroll arrows, I can uh, I can turn the beep on and off. I've got units of measurement, a keyboard layout. So when you're typing things in on the screen, delete the keyboard history, memorize keyboard history, animation for different things on the screen, driver setting. So let's oops, let's go back. Sorry, clicked the wrong one. So let's go back. Driver setting. Okay. Um, so you can preset this uh, with audio, button colors, and language to a certain paired Bluetooth phone. 
which is interesting because a lot of this stuff we see on cars is linked to the remote of the car. This one's actually linked to your phone. Maybe the first time I've seen that. Um, so those kinds of driver settings can be can be set. Okay, you got software update, software update setting, um, Grace Note database. If you don't know what that is, basically that's what allows you when you're playing uh, streaming music through your phone allows pictures to show up. So album art and that kind of stuff. Software information setting. Um, our information and then uh, sensitivity level here and then uh, and then we're back to the same thing we were system time and and we can customize the home screen a little bit so here's the three quadrants but you can select what you want to display so if I click change layout I have these different options so it, it's it's kind of really neat um, you can revert you know this is what we have currently but we can reverse it and have this if you want the biggest screen closest to you um, which I kind of like. Um, and then you can also decide what you want um, in there. So if if I, um, let's see, if I press Scout, okay, I can click where I want to display and then it changes to Scout, okay? I think phone's probably better to have there, so I'm just gonna replace that with phone, but very easy to do. So you can customize your home screen. Now let's go down to Bluetooth for a minute here. Uh, basically, you can register or add a new device, remove a, de a device, or look at the detailed settings. Audio, okay, interesting name, okay, common, okay, display cover art, yes or no, and uh, priority display of grace note, and I explained that for earlier. All right, let's go down to, um, if I click on audio, oh, back button again, I can go to the radio, I can select how many presets I would like to display, and it'll go up to 36 presets. Okay, let's go down to phone. Phone here, you could connect a phone. You can uh, determine what kind of sounds you get with the ringtone, okay? You can select one from the phone or you can do other ones that are- Incoming call from John Smith. All right. Incoming call from John Smith. That, that could get tiring after a while. <laughs> but, uh, and you can look at your call contacts, uh, history, you can look at notifications. All right, going down to voice command here. Voice volume, voice recognition prompts. Uh, train your voice recognition, which you would want to do if you just bought this. Voice recognition tutorial, voice prompt interrupt, and then default, and that is everything that's there. Okay, we do have a little arrow down there, which means we have one couple more things. So if I go down to vehicle, okay, vehicle customization. Okay, I can change my door lock settings here. Automatic door lock when I by shifting from park or by speed or off, okay? Uh, automatic door unlock, same same uh, options here, okay? Remote two press unlock, okay? Wireless lock when door opens, on or off, on or off there. Select which doors to unlock. So you can actually decide all doors are just a driver's door, okay? Uh, then let's see, you'll go down here, lock, unlock, feedback lights. So when you click the remote, you can see the lights uh, flash and then um, lock or unlock the feedback tone. Climate settings. Auto AC can be automatically turned on or off. Uh, if we go into light settings, then we have headlights on, auto on sensitivity, which is kind of nice. Like sometimes you have a auto lights and they don't come on, like you would like them on a little bit earlier than they do come on. And you can set that sensitivity right there. Headlights auto off timer, so you can get out of your car and have a little light left to unlock your doors. Daytime running lights on or off. And then your interior lights auto timer off. Okay, you can set how long your interior lights are on when you uh, lock up the car. All right, let's go back one more here. Okay, this does have a valet mode. Okay, so you can um, put a four digit code in here and then it will lock certain features of the car. So the valet can't get into them. And then of course you have dealer info. So you can put your dealer's information right in there so you have easy access to it. Wi-Fi, okay, you can turn a hotspot on or off and then a password and how to connect. And then you have something on the Entune app suite here. So and that's the, that, the app that you would download on your phone, okay? And a bunch of different things, a data uses message, uh, like once per drive, uh, you can change that setting to um, never display, that kind of stuff. Okay, and then auto detect iPhone app. 
connect USB in enhanced mode, okay? And then an app catalog. All right, so that is basically what you have in here. Other than that, you do have a map button um, and this is using Scout GPS. So Scout is an app that you load on your phone. Um, and, okay, I haven't finished setting up my phone far enough to get that to display, but that is an app. It does come free for a while with the purchases of the car, but then you would have to pay for it after a while. Okay, you do have a seek button. So let me go back to the, um, let's go back to audio for a minute. And I want to go to source. And I'm going to select just a FM radio station. Okay. So in the radio mode, you can use the seek buttons up here to go right to the next station. Or you can go backwards to the next station. Okay. You do have, uh, this will also work for when you're using the Apple CarPlay to skip between songs and so forth. The other way you can do that is on your steering wheel on the left-hand side with the up and down arrows. All right, let's go to phone. Here you have your basic phones that, you, that we see. You've got your history, favorites, contacts, keypad, selective device in case there's more than one phone paired, and then uh, a message center. And then if I click on the app screen, this is where all the stuff I have on Entune shows up, okay? And then you, of course, have uh, the communications button. Then you can click on notifications to see if there are any available. Okay, other than that, you've got a power volume, okay? And then you've, you can just click that to shut it off, okay? And then also the last button over here on the right, if I go back to... Um, let's see if I go back to audio and if I scroll this button here I can also physically change the radio stations okay all right your presets will show up right here and of course a little arrow to show you the next new ones and the way to program in a station is uh, so I've got 90.1 if I just push and hold then it's locked in all right uh, in addition to that, it's just worth saying that, you know, it's got six speakers and it has uh, Apple CarPlay again and Amazon Alexa capable. All right, moving down to the climate control system here. Basically, we have auto on or off. Um, we've got the turn the fan off. We've got rear defroster, front defroster, AC, recirculatory, and then these are two interesting buttons. you got a heat and uh, eco heat and cool button. And this is, does what... Um, I showed you earlier on the dashboard here, but basically it turns it between auto, normal, and that's it. So um, you, you, you get a little better if you leave it on auto and it's eco control and a little um, worse score if you, I suppose a little bit more gas usage if you leave it there. The other feature is this button right here. And basically this is a physical button to one of the things we saw in this driver's information system earlier. But you can say, I want front seats only, I want all seats, and, and, then, and then in the infotainment screen, you could actually say it to driver only, okay? So, just a way to save a little bit more money on fuel. Okay, moving uh, down here, um, you do have your push button brake. And then on the gear selector, the only thing I'll say on here is this B. And what, what this is to be used for is if you're going down a hill and you want the car to stay in a certain gear, you can use that. It's kind of like engine braking. Okay. Your drive mode, uh, if you push this, it'll show up on your driver's information screen. But basically, you have a power mode. You have an uh, eco mode and you have a normal mode that you can just click right through. All right, and then the other mode that you have, as long as you're traveling at a low speed um, and not using the accelerator heavy, you can use this EV mode, and that shows up right up here, uh, and then it'll run on battery instead of gas. All right, and that is it for the driver's information center and the infotainment screen. I uh, hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.